Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I'm gonna uh, start talking about the another method or technique for solving PDEs, and that is uh, separation of variables. So so far, we have talked about uh, characteristic uh, way, characteristic lines and characteristic curves, and the way we can use them to solve. <clears throat> Uh, or PDEs, uh, we we showed some example of second order uh, linear PDEs and also one uh, nonlinear uh, PDE. Or um, if you remember, it was uh, Berger's equation. So in this uh, lecture, I'm gonna introduce a new method, which is uh, separation. of variables so let's see uh, what it is so as I said separation of variables is a technique to solve PDEs And the way uh, this technique works is that you have to uh, propose a solution that is composed of the product of two functions that each only depend on one independent variable. So let's see what, what this means. So this means that the solution that we are going to propose uh, with this method looks like something like this, u, x, and t. And then this solution is composed of two functions that each only depend on one independent variable. So for example, we can say x can be a function of only x is a function of only x and then we multiply this by another function t that is only a function of time or t so this is the way that we are gonna uh, define separation of variables and the technique works that we propose this solution to a, a PDE and then we solve that PDE and find the forms of x and t, these uh, two functions. So this is a general method, and I'm going to solve two examples of this. Uh, one example in this uh, lecture and one in the next one. So you better understand uh, what this means. This, uh, and as you see, this is the... Uh, essence of separation of variables, right? So we have separated x and t into two functions that all, each of them only uh, depend on one independent variable. So this function only depends on x and the other one, this one, only depends on t, okay? And then we multiply this and by proposing this solution, um, we try to solve the PDE. A given PDE. Okay, so these techniques ha this technique has some prerequisites, and I want to write them when you can use this technique. So prerequisites of this technique are uh, you cannot always use this. Uh, you need to have some prerequisites. Uh, so the first one is that the coordinate 
system, for example, if you have XT or whatever, has to be an orthogonal system. Okay. Uh, the second prerequisite that uh, is required to use this technique is that the boundaries are aligned with the coordinate system. With the coordinate coordinate system and finally the coefficients in the equation equations are all constant okay so the coefficients that we have uh, are constant and they are not also a variable and so the, if these prerequisites are satisfied then uh, we can propose a, a solution to a PDE with this form and then uh, solve this uh, PDE with this uh, uh, separation of variable technique okay so now I'm gonna solve uh, one example of this so you get uh, more familiar how this technique can be applied into uh, an, uh, a PDE. So the question that we have is solve the following one dimensional transient heat equation so the equation that we have is partial u over partial t equals to k partial square u over partial x square for x between 0 and l so this is a, a one-dimensional transient heat equation if you remember from the classification of PDEs that we had before so uh, just to give you an idea this is actually uh, let me just do it this way so if you have say uh, I want to I want to show what is the how what is the physical um, kind of meaning of this and how does this look like in physically so for example this can be a beam or a, mm, yeah, like a beam a steel or something and then uh, this side can be 0, x equals to 0, and this side could be x equals to L. And then you start heating, heating from here, okay? So, for example, uh, you can, let me just... Uh, write something like this you start heating from here and then this uh, added heat is propagated in the beam okay so uh, this is actually the equation for this um, 1d transient heat equation uh, where uh, you have these two boundary conditions and then you want to solve the distribution of this uh, add additional or added heat uh, in the um, in the system in this beam okay 
uh, based on the initial condition and the boundary condition. So, so for example, this can be an initial condition, okay? Uh, you can have different initial conditions, so it's not necessary, necessarily here. It can be like uh, you, 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 you start hitting here, here, and then you want to see uh, the propagation of these uh, heated areas, and then you want to solve this in uh, time and space, this PDE. Okay, so with this intuition, the boundary condition uh, for this particular problem is given as u at 0 and, uh, at, and t equals to 0. So we say that uh, the heat or u at here is going to be 0 always, and also here it's going to be 0. So I'm going to write it as u l and t equals u l and t so these are the boundary conditions and then the initial condition for this problem is u at x and at time zero at any x and time zero is a general function called f of x we, we want to solve this generally for any general function of uh, x uh, noted as fx. Okay, so this is the problem statement that we have, and we wanna <clears throat> we wanna solve uh, this problem, this ODE, based on um, based on these uh, boundary condition and initial conditions. Okay. And I want to use the mm, method, uh, the uh, separation of variable method, okay? So this is the answer. So based on this method, we have to propose a solution like this by com that is composed of the product of two functions that each only depend on one independent variable. So I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to propose the following solution. Propose the following solution. I'm going to say the solution of u, x, and t is going to be a multiplication of two functions that each only depend on one uh, independent variable, so x, x, and capital T as a function of time, or t, okay? So now that I have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, substitute the definitions here to get a relation for uh, these two functions, these uh, x and t. So let's calculate this. So the, f the first term I'm going to calculate is partial u over partial t. So partial u over partial t, um, if you take the derivative of this function with respect to time so this function is not a function x is not a function of time so it's like a con it acts like a constant and only t is a function of time right so this is gonna be x times t dot and i'm gonna show uh, this is just uh, this right so i'm gonna just show it like this t dot as a derivative and i'm gonna calculate du over partial u over partial x which is going to be, again, t is now is considered as a constant, 
and I can just um, write this as x dot times t correct and so partial u partial square u over partial x square I'm going to take another derivative of this with respect to x and again t is considered as a constant here because it's not a function of x so I only need to take the uh, derivative uh, for x so I'm going to have x double dot times t okay so now I just write uh, this equation here the PDE that I have between these two so it says partial u over partial t which is the first one x t dot equals to k times partial square u over partial x square which is this one so it's going to be k times x double dot times t right okay so i have converted my pde into um, this system by defining this function okay and now it's the trick of the separation of variable okay so now separate the variables so the whole trick is here so now we separate the variables uh, so I take all the t's on the left hand side and all the x's anything that is a function of x to the right hand side of this equation so I'm gonna get 1 over k times t dot over t equals to x double dot over x and I write okay so no let me say this so now we have two things so this I can write it as a function like f of time right because it's only a function of time and the right hand side so let me do it this way so this is only a function of time and uh, this one is only a function of x right and now this says this equality says to me that a function of time or t an independent variable equals to a function of x gx okay so the only way that this can happen is if that this equals to a constant so let me write this down clearly and then uh, we can say it again why so for the LHS the left hand side and RHS or right hand side so this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side RHS and LHS to be equal for all x and t they have to equal a constant and let me say the reason for this <clears throat> 
So imagine you have um, I'm going to plot it here. Imagine this is x and this is g. Okay. So I'm going to plot it. So uh, let me do it like this. This is x and this is g. gx. So any, any function, okay, any, uh, say, uh, arbitrary function, you can put it here. And then we can have uh, t. I, I'm going to just put, uh, put it on top of each other. And ft. Okay. And I'm going to plot it. Let me, any arbitrary function, okay. So it can be something like this, okay. So the only way that... This ft and gx are going to become equal at all points, at all x and t. It's only possible if they equal to a constant, right? Here, for example, they don't equal. For example, here, they are not equal to each other. Uh, or here, they are not equal to each other, okay? And this is for all x and t, so you can... Uh, just take it uh, like uh, shift your x and t to any anywhere and then these all have to match with each other so the only way that is it is possible is if your functions are are constant so for example are uh, they all equal to for example like this so uh, Like this can be x and gx, and this can be ft. So the only way that they can become equal is um, they equal to a constant. So this is not possible, but... This is the way, the only way that they can equal to each other, right? So the same thing is here. So the only way that uh, this function equals to this function or these two equal to each other is that if they equal to a constant. And the constant, I'm going to uh, name it as minus lambda square. Okay, so this is constant. And here is the trick. So now, this is going to give me two equations. One equation for t, evolution of t, and one equation for evolution of x. So let's first start with t. So the first equation it's going to give me is t dot equals to minus k lambda square t, right? So this is the first equation that I can get from here. Okay. So now uh, we have to solve this equation. This, uh, this is now an ODE. Now we have defined a partial differential equation into an ODE. And so this ODE, we can solve it. And uh, the way I'm going to solve it is like this. I'm going to say this is minus k lambda square t. And then I'm going to just write it down as dt over t. Let me write it down like this dt over dt equals to minus uh, k lambda square uh, t. And then I'm going to just uh, uh, take all the same variables into one place and write this down as minus k lambda square dt. 
and then take an integral here and this is gonna give me so the integral of dt over t uh, or 1 over t is gonna give me logarithm uh, natural logarithm of t equals to minus and the second one is gonna give you minus k lambda square uh, times uh, t small t plus a integration uh, coefficient okay and then if you uh, just uh, take uh, take a power of e from both sides you are going to get e to the ln t which is going to be just uh, t equals to e to the minus I'm going to write this as C1, the constant, times e to the minus k lambda square t. Okay, so the solution of t, the t function, looks like this. C1 times, let me... Uh, write it a little bit below this so the solution of t with respect to time equals to c1 times e to the minus k lambda square t okay so this is the first This is the first uh, solution that is important and we found, okay? So this is the first solution. And then the second part, the second part is going to give me The second, uh, the second equality is going to give me um, x double dot plus lambda square x equals to 0, right? So this is this uh, equality that I have written down. Okay. So now I want to solve this equation. And this equation, as you will see, is a second order linear ODE and it's like a SL or a storm level problem that we discussed last time, right? Uh, if you remember, uh, we solved a very similar um, problem to this one. And so, as you remember, uh, the solution of a storm level problem of this type is given as a sum of two functions, the sum of uh, C2 sine lambda x plus C3 cosine lambda x, correct? This was something that we learned uh, from last time from the uh, strong level uh, problems. So now I want to find, uh, I have all these uh, solutions. The only remaining thing is that I need to find these coefficients, C1, C2, and C3, okay? So first, let's find here uh, C2 and C3 from the applying boundary conditions and initial conditions. So by applying two boundary conditions I have and one initial condition, I'm gonna, I want to find uh, these coefficients. So let's first apply boundary conditions. So because this is X, so X, uh, so... So for the, uh, 
for finding the uh, coefficients of x, we are going to apply boundary condition. And for finding the coefficient of t or time, we are going to apply initial condition. Okay. So for finding the uh, coefficient of x, I'm going to apply x at 0 is 0 based on what is given to me here. Right? And x at L is also 0. So first, let's see x at 0 is 0. What is this going to give me? It is going to give me C2 sine of lambda 0 plus C3 cosine of 0 is 0, right? And this is already 0. And so this is 1. And this is going to give me that C3 should be 0. And then the second uh, requirement or boundary condition says x at L should be 0. So, sine, the only remaining thing is C2 sine at lambda L is going to be uh, 0, right? So, the non-trivial solution is uh, that c2 is not 0 and sine lambda l is 0 and thus in order uh, for this to be 0 lambda can be lambda can be n pi over l for n equals to 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. So this gives me lambda n or the eigenvalues. So these are the eigenvalues of this problem. And now I have... Uh, everything i have the solution for time i have the solution for x and the only thing is remain is that i combine these two together okay so i have uh, this uh, as well so this is going to be my solution so let me write this down x of x is going to be c2 I know C3 is 0, so I'm going to just write C2 sine lambda n x, where lambda n is n pi L, and n is from 1, 2, 3, etc. So this is going to give me my second solution, right? And now I can combine these two to get my final solution, which is here, right? So, uh, I have to multiply these two functions to get the final solution of u. And then I have to also specify this uh, the C1, C2 multiplication these coefficients to be able to find the final solution of this um, problem.